the lasting one. How long does the longest you've had? Um, five months. That's pretty long for 20. How'd that yeah. go? What happened with that? Well, he lived two hours away, and we only saw each other once a month. And that's why it lasted so long. Right? Yeah. If he lived four hours away, it would have lasted 10 months, Drew. So is there something making closeness scary to you? Probably. What's that something? Um, I don't know. I've always kind of pushed people away. Why? Um, a lot of stuff growing up. Like what? Um, let's see. My brother sexually abused me. All right. Um, my mom and my brother, because my brother is a misfit growing up, he did, basically you name it, he did it. And so my home was like a war zone. Your mother and he were always fighting. Yeah. All right. Mm, is he older? Yeah. And he sexually years. abused you. And oh, where, where's your dad? My dad and my parents, my mom and my dad are still together. And through all that, your dad was there? Yeah. Why didn't he help your mom out? To... Um, he's kind of quiet and my mom's kind of domineering. Mm. Interesting. All right. So gonna... uh, you, you've got some insight into what's going on. Why not uh, try a relationship on for size? I mean, you seem to desire intimacy. You know what's holding you back. You... Yeah, you have capacity yeah. to try it out. Yeah, a little a sprinkling of therapy too. I mean, your brother molests you. It's serious, but you know what? I don't feel the chaos from her. Uh, you never know, but you know. I don't her feel... name is Misty. It's not good. It's yeah. Not good. Yeah, uh, I, I get her back. Okay, one second, Misty. Yeah. Well, what did your brother do to you? How old were you? I was seven. What did he do? Um. Well, you want me to get specific? Well, well, did he have sexual intercourse with you? Among other things. Okay. Among other things. And he's a uh, few years, three years older, did you say? Five years older. And this happened repeatedly to you or just the one time? Um, three different times I can remember. Seven. Oh. Uh, so he was 12. Uh. Yeah. He's yeah. Junior high. Yeah. That's, uh, what's he doing now, by the way? What time? That's what he's doing now. Um, he was a, he's a mechanic now. He's got a wife and two kids. Oh. Uh. That's a kid's fantastic. <laughs> oh, boy. Muffler. Is he... Muffler mechanic? No. Just mechanics, good enough. All right, Misty. Listen, you, you got to get a little help for this because this is this is big time, right? Okay. I mean, that, that, that's it's that's pretty heavy. Potentially big time, but I, I intercourse can't. with the brother, I know, Drew. I know, yeah, I know. I know. That's big time. Potentially. Uh, very uh, listen, big time. Misty sounds as good as she can sound for someone yeah. who's had yeah. this happen yes. to her, and maybe she could find some capacity to tolerate a relationship. Uh, my sister slammed my huggy blanket in the door, and I'm still pissed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I can only imagine if she uh, put on a strap on and <laughs> sodomized me. <laughs> Wait a minute. The oh, heaven? yeah, she did do that. Oh, I okay. confused a huggy blanket with something else. Okay. I didn't have a huggy blanket. Different kind of transition object. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, you're seven years old and your brother's on top. Yeah, you know, how? it is huge. I understand it's huge. But do you understand her history was not, hey, I'm doing drugs, I'm a prostitute, I'm a stripper, I've had five billion relationships, I don't know whether I'm gay or, or straight. Her deal was, uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of. Hold staying. on, hold on, Brett. Put that on. Put there. that on. Put a separate okay. cart, Thank would you? you? I'm going to want to hear that later, out of context. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Can I just hear it back, just so I know what I'm in for? <laughs> Can we hear it? You know, hear. We'll hear it at the break. All, All right. right. Um, right. It wasn't that. It was. Uh, I'm, I'm cooling out on relationships. I'm able to contain all that. I just stay away, push people away. But, I mean, she could erupt in chaos if she, if she gets in a relationship. Right. But she also may be able to kind of contain. It's just okay. a matter of the choices she makes. All right. I'm hip. Sarah. Yeah. You're 18. Yes. How do you let a guy know when you're attracted? Oh, everything you were saying is so true about the touch and the drag thing. Touch and I drag. I agree 100%. And and it, when there's a guy who you're not attracted to, you really won't touch him for exactly. anything, will you? You don't want to touch him at all. Yeah, and you just you just won't. And if you hug him, it'll be like an ironing board tipped over on him. And you try not to touch your chest to his. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you hug. On the other That's hand. Another thing. Yeah, you do that humpback That's thing. Yeah. On the other hand, yeah, you press, yeah, you press the breasts up against Mm-hmm. That's, hey, that's good. Yeah, you you could where, probably. Where did we even learn that one? There's a whole biology. Where, where did that come from? Well, what do you mean? It's 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 getting the, the jugs closer to to the guy. I mean, it's a, it's almost a sexual act. I you know there's there's a whole way that you could probably read hugs. It's like frauderism. Listen, we got to look more into this. You know, well, we're doing it right now. Come on. All right. Yeah, I'm saying you could hug if you could probably analyze hugs. You could hug someone and know just where you were at with them. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, sir. 
Well, I had the question I originally had was that my boyfriend, he's kind of verbally abusive to me, and I was wondering if it can escalate from that into physical abuse. Your boyfriend? Yeah, but I have even a, a better question. Than that. A, what's your other question? Um, I don't know if I'm weird or something, but I don't really have sexual desires uh, for sex. Hmm, interesting. I you enjoy, choose. you know, orgasm from other things, but not from sex. I choose, a, choose an abuser, don't like sex. Hmm. And I can't orgasm from sex either. Yeah, interesting. Ooh. Adam, care to venture a guess? It seems kind of like a layup. Uh, do you want you want to gamble? No. I don't bring my no. gamble wallet. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, the dad, uh, dad. Whatever. Um, I'm sorry. I have, to, I have to go. I'm at work. Was there any, where are you working? Uh, in Santa Maria. I have to go, though. Well, huh, we'll put you on hold. Okay. All right. Santa Maria. What the hell's she doing there? <laughs> you, you know, sometimes I think about how everyone who calls a sh uh, show from work has a horrible job, and then I realize there's no counting firm that's open at uh, 11 at night. There's yeah. no uh, attorney's office. Y you know what I mean? Yeah. Of course everyone's working at a gas station or sorting mail. Yeah. It, it, uh, Nick. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. What's going on? Um, I have a uh, friend who I've known her about like a month and a half now. Um, I've, I've known to be really good friends with her, um, and I know her brother also. Anyways, um, I, and I've, I've partied with her a little bit. I've, you know, smoked a little pot with her. I'm done with that now. <laughs> um, I found out that she is going out with this guy that I knew for about four weeks before I knew her. Um, and I found out that he's a crackhead at first. You know, I told her that, and she's like, oh, whatever. And then I found out today that, um, that her, her, uh, her boyfriend's uh, so-called lover is, you know, having sex with him. And I want to know if I should tell her or not, or she what can I do to help her out and get out of the situation, because, you know, I really like her. I don't want to be catch her, have her catch anything, you know? Well, look, you can't save her or protect her from things she wants to do, right? Uh -huh. It's interesting that you want to sort of fix this this sick, this broken woman that's uh, going after these dysfunctional relationships. Do you like her still? Um, I like her, yeah. I mean, of course, you know, I want to go farther, but, you know, she, we're just friends. She, yeah. she won't. Tomorrow You're too right nice. Now. You know that huh? too nice thing? You're too nice, Nick. Yeah. yeah. That's what she's going to say. She needs a bisexual crack at it. Who beats her up, okay? Yeah, you're not, you're not fitting that bill. And yeah, she'll, I mean, she'll have to turn you into that in order to suit her. Yeah. Okay, now, the deal is you can go, you should feel free to walk up to her and say, hey, look, I'm concerned. Here's what I know this got to be. I'm just concerned about you. Just, you know, let, just hear me. And let her do what she will with it. But beyond that, that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and don't, don't work for these big. Look up for these big projects. Uh, she, she's a. Uh, she doesn't need a fixer. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why the show just stopped. Kathy. Yes. You're 22. Yes, I am. What's going on? Um. Well, I know how you feel about this, but I swear I'm not a minister of society. I'm a single mother. Um, and I knew that was going to take a toll on my lifestyle when I chose to parent my child. But no, by the way, wait, no, wait, wait, let's stop you right there. No one says a single mom is any sort of menace. I know. No way. I, no, I, I don't. Know. No, I don't care if someone wants to raise a kid. I uh, without a dad. I care when they want to raise eight kids without a dad, <laughs> or if they want, or they want me to pay for uh, their kid that they uh, they're allegedly raising, <laughs> although that I sponsor. Hey, you know, you know this uh, this country is just becoming a sort of it's like the NASCAR circuit. Hey, we all just pick, uh, we get jobs and then we just pick cars to sponsor and then they go out for the year on the circuit. But anyway, Kathy. Well, my son has some pretty critical illnesses. Um, several. Several. Um, he has a few. He has some cardiac things going on and he has um, a respiratory condition. So these are all congenital problems. Um, the heart is. Yeah. Um, the respiratory, they're not sure about, but I have a strong history of lung disease in my family. So, okay. Um, asthma, COPD. Um, so they think it's some sort of they, they think it's some sort of asthma. Um, yeah, okay. it's it's grown into that. It okay. started as just reactive airway disease. Well, it's asthma. All right. Um, but the heart, he's got this defect that causes his pulse to go up to 360 beats a minute, okay. and then his heart shuts down. Mm -hmm. Um. And everything kind of plays into each other. The asthma, the medication makes his heart race and blah, blah, blah. So, so he, anyhow. He, his only cardiac defect is a rhythm disturbance? Yeah, but he, it's a structural thing that's what is the, What is the it's structural problem? Parkinson-White syndrome. WPW, okay. Yes. All right. Um, WPW is not a big deal, Kathy. He's, he's, it's, it's one of the highest rated cable shows. Right? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. 
He, he'll have ablation someday, I'm sure, right? Yeah, they're talking about that, but in the meantime... In the meantime, he has, he's on some medicines and it'll control it. No. Every medicine that they've tried with him has failed. How old is he? He's 18 months. Um, all right. Um, so, all right, so what? What? So those are those are he's serious. I don't want to minimize how much of a pain they must be and how, well, how scary I mean, it must be. He's had some some pretty close calls, um, and they've actually had to resuscitate him a couple times, and it's just kind of like a cloud hanging over my head. I bet. I um, bet. and I'm fixed on it. I, I, bet. I can't get past it. I. I yeah. I can't date. I can't go out. I'm afraid to leave him alone. I feel guilty. I feel guilty about even wanting to have a social life. Um, well, all right. Now, the, are they talking about an implantable defibrillator or anything like that with him? Um, it's not gotten to that point yet, but he just started having seizures about a week ago. Oh, my goodness. Implantable um, defibrillator? You mean yeah. That you like a, a crash cart that yeah. you put in, in on you? Your, yeah. On your skin, yeah. Really? Oh, they're great. Yeah. They're terrific. I got to get one of those. No. I need one in the morning. Yeah. I really do. I have such a hard time getting up. He's got some of the best cardiologists in the country. Yep, yep. I'm just, I'm, I'm really concerned about it. And then the seizures, they said that it's possible that that is from, um, he's been through neurological testing this week, yeah. and this just started a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's awful. And they awful. think that um, right, the arrhythmias right. are causing the blood to back up, and he's not getting an adequate supply to his brain. Right. Well, when he has those fast rhythms, certainly he doesn't. Yeah. All right, so. Oh, boy, Kathy. All right, on top so. of all, hey, where's a uh, biological dad? He's out of the picture, and I made um a decision to do that because um, he's not a very admirable character, so to speak. Did you do any substances or anything during your pregnancy? No. Okay. Oh, goodness, no. Okay. No, I nursed him. I did everything that I thought I was supposed to do. Okay, um, okay so you, and you, are, are you working now? Uh, I can't. I can't. I'm can't living off of savings right now, and when that goes out, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, but my. In you, the where, meantime, where's your family? Family of origin. Kind of split apart. I have six brothers and sisters, and no one can help you. No, not really. So it's just oh, me. Kathy. I'm trying to do this by myself. Oh, Kathy. They told me on Monday that he's not going to outgrow it. They thought he would outgrow it after a year, and his first birthday came and went. Yeah. And I mean, it's been physical therapy twice a week. He's got developmental delays and everything else. So it's not just the WPW. There's, there's a lot of stuff going there's, on. Yeah. A lot of stuff going and, on. And it's just like everything plays into each other. I bet. I bet. And his, like, he's on a nebulizer. Yeah. And the albuterol makes his heart race. So no, I understand. So wheezing, you, you no, got to watch him. I understand. I understand. And it's just... You, you I, I can't you, get past you, it. You, you, I mean, I've sought out support uh, and things like hey, that. Hey, Kathy, do you have any yeah. girlfriends? Yeah, but you, you, you can't really help me with this. I mean, nobody wants to be... Well, no one's going to help you. I mean, no you, one can really help you with it. Could you hire a nurse for a couple of hours a day or a couple of hours a week? Not really, because it's not that critical. It's no, no, no. I, 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 could you... Yeah. Jan, what do you do? I, we got to go to commercial. All right, I'll talk to her off here. Because she, she... Listen, and God bless Kathy. This is just one of those situations. I mean, there, That's horrible. There, there are some options, and I'll talk to her about it. But uh, you will, yeah. I mean, you don't. You don't. Even, you don't have kids, Adam. You can't. You, I don't have kids. You can't know. Oh, that would, I, listen. Uh, that's why I don't want kids. You would just take any if uh, a, a, a real parent, <laughs> not like the like ones we talk to. Yeah, would just take any bullet. You just take it. Really? Your kids, yeah. yeah. I think you say that, but you know, when no. push comes oh, to no. shove, you throw the kids right in front of the bullet. No, no. I would. No, because if you did that, you, you'd kill yourself. You couldn't live. You couldn't live two seconds after that. Yeah. No, I'd, I'd be over couldn't. it by the time football season no. came around. Mm -mm. I think I would. And yeah. that's what she's going through. She can't, If something were to have happened because she had to go out and take care of herself, she couldn't live with herself. Well, listen, that's why I don't want kids because, to me, a kid is just like a piece of me that could just go out and be molested or run over or felt oh, up or attacked so, by bees while I'm not watching. I mean, God. that's what it is. To me, it's like oh. it's like I've cut my leg off oh. and I put eyes on it. cares about you? It's about a kid. It. It's a separate person. Right. You just said you couldn't live if something happened to your kid. Yeah, I couldn't live. That's right. Because of them. That's not because, right. Not because it's part of me. Because it's Either them. way, you don't get to live if something happens to them. Mm. You understand me? That's why I can't do it. I got to live. I got to be free. I got to love. I've got to sing. <laughs> <laughs> you love it when I break out in song. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, you talk to Kathy off the air. All right. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to call my girlfriend, tell her to uh, get some more uh, birth control. <laughs> Loveline's phone number is 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. We'll be right back. Hey, the 
the love line. Drew was uh, speaking to uh, Kathy, I think it was. Off the air about uh, the horrible plight of her uh, 18-month-old. And uh, he's now uh, entered the studio. What's going on there, Drew? Huh? my coffee. Oh, your coffee. <laughs> I left it out on the ledge there. Ann, could you, uh, uh, Sherry? Uh, for, uh, yeah. All right, hey, it was an, it was an effort. Almost I stopped it. there. Yeah, almost you almost made here. it in. Yeah. I did put my dick in it, though. <laughs> it's Loveline. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. You know, my friend, I don't want to say his name, but he put his dick in some Snapple once yeah. that he thought was mine yeah. when I left the office. And then when I came back into the office, someone else picked it up and was drinking it. He was looking at him, and I was looking at him, and I didn't know what was going on. And then later when he left, he filled me in on it. And, you know, my feeling was, hey, it wasn't my Snapple. I didn't really take much offense to it, you know? Yeah, but... The idea is, is, that, is this, that, that the, penis, the penis was Ray. meant for me. No, no, it wasn't. Is this one of your disgusting friends? Mm. Well, all your friends are disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and, but, but answer that. I mean, I, I understand the big difference. <laughs> a human was going to drink something that this guy exposed his genitalia to. Who cares if it was you or somebody else? It's gross. No yeah, but it, it's more, listen, it's more, I think, it's think more the fun danger, to do things to people you know. Yeah, I think the danger, the harm's way he would be in had you actually been the one. Oh, you mean in terms of retaliation? Retaliation, yeah. Knows what yeah, would you know, I'm too tired to retaliate these days. Ooh. I just take my lumps. Hey, uh, another thing, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out tonight from our female callers how you let a guy know subtly that you're interested in him, especially, uh, you know, when it's a work-type environment or situation. Not, not both of you loaded at a bar and you both climbed on to the mechanical bull at the same time, but just a subtle way that you uh, let a guy know that you're interested. I, I, I have uh, other ones here because I'm trying to clue guys in with this. Um, the topic of sex or anything of an intimate nature will not be brought up by them. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they'll not say, hey, what about this movie that was pretty hot? Or did you see that uh, Pam Tom, Tommy Lee uh, type of thing? You know, they, they will avoid the issue of sex or intimacy even if it's about a third party or something sort of extraneous. If they're not interested. If, if with you. Yeah, yeah, if they're not attracted yeah. to you. Yeah. And the other good one is, is if anyone tells you they had a dream and uh, you were in it and it was, uh, and then they give you that, like, and you go, well, what happened? And they go, uh, <laughs> I don't think I should say. You're in. You might as well just grab for their boobs right there. You do what I do. You put the stiletto right between the bra. Right, right where that little strap is, and you it. snap it, just like those True Detective magazines. This is like uh, Zorro. Yeah, it's sort of like that. Yeah, Anne, am I right? I mean, if, if some girl says a guy, listen, I had a dream about you the other night. Oh, it was, it was a little what bit naughty. What about the dream you had about me? Yeah, what were we doing? I was with your Diane. Dream. You what? I was with Diane, I think. Oh, you're having like a lesbian thing with her? I don't know. It's your dream. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> oh, I, I wasn't that. there. I don't remember. I, I uh, guys can do this all the time. Yeah, by the way, anything is sexual to a guy. Everything's sexual. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, they, they could be watching the news before they go to bed, and they're Barbara could, Walters. Could be Barbara Walters, and the next thing you know, is she's woven right into the dream. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that much. But I'd say if a woman had a sexual dream about yeah, a guy she right. worked with, that right. meant something. Mm -hmm. Guys, guys can do it just via proximity. Uh, guys, I think it's just, just the impulse occurs and there's an image nearby and just, just they're going go, with it. Yeah, it goes. With yeah, it. sometimes probably... if you don't really realize that you're attracted to that person and then you have that dream, yeah, and then it's weird the next day, <laughs> right? When they walk in the room, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like, especially if you're in a relationship, it feels like you cheated a little bit, right? Yeah, you're like kind of enjoying yourself with somebody else. It's like cheating without the uh, without the cramps. Amanda. Yeah. Can you put that in a loop, please, uh, uh, Brad? And here, oh, Brad. By the way, where is uh, where is uh, Drew's uh, trap? There, do you have that? Hey, I'm doing drugs. I'm a prostitute. I'm a stripper. I've had five billion relationships. I don't know whether I'm gay or, or straight. <laughs> <laughs> that is golden. I want you to put like uh, a check by that one or something, Brad, because I'm going to wear the tape out on that. I really am. I may I may have you put that on a cassette. I want I want to hear it on the ride home. Amanda, yeah, <laughs> well, that is that could be some of your best work yet, Drew. There's a new, there's a new uh, doggy oh, coming off of that. Dooley's going to be excited to oh, hear that. God. All right, Amanda, what's going on with you? Well, I've been like practically best friends with this guy for I don't know about six months now, and um, me and him started getting like physical 
and yesterday I stayed home from school and he came over and well we ended up having sex. How old is he? He's seventeen. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah. Hey, you want to do a little gambling? Maybe this is a gambling. No, problem. I'm not in the gambling mood. Really? Okay. What's up with you, Amanda? What do you mean, what's up? Oh, man, I mean, there must be some, some chaos going on at home. Yeah. This is yeah, a, well, yeah, um... Pretty bold decision for a 13-year-old. What is the deal? Well, I was the only virgin left uh, in the group that I hang out with, and I just, I mean, I was like the last person to have sex out of the entire group that I hang out with. How old is this group you hang out with? Um... I think he's the oldest. All right, that's the point. Why do you choose to hang out with these people? What's going on at home that makes you feel the need for all this? Well, um, I used to have a stepdad. He's my ex-stepdad. What'd he do to you? Um, you name it. Yeah. So you weren't really a virgin? Oh, I was a virgin, but, I mean, I didn't let, it, I didn't let him take it that far. Your, your stepdad? Yeah. Okay. He's, he's, well, I don't live with him anymore. I understand. Mm. But he, he abused you in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, and I'm guessing your biological dad was no find either, right? Yeah. Uh, do you ever talk to him? Yeah, I still visit him and stuff, so. You do? Yeah. Uh, he, he's got to be a piece of work, your biological dad. I well, mean, um, he smokes a lot of pot. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm I, using I, the logic, I and everybody, please, please understand this. Uh, biological mom would not have brought this uh, piece of vermin stepdad into the house uh, by fluke. She she has bad decision making, and she, the first guy she picked was a a hole too, which is original Papa. Mm -hmm. and, you, and so, what's up with your mom? She is she an addict? Um, no, but she used to be. Yeah. She, the, the, she like is an addict. When I was man. little, she smoked pot. Yeah. All right. So how's everything now? She got rid of stepdad. Yeah, she got rid of Why'd my she... dad, and then she got rid of my stepdad, uh, but she still has my two sisters oh, and me. Yeah. How old are your two sisters? Um, Five and three. Mm. Right. And um, why'd she get rid of stepdad? Because he... um. He physically abused me, and he took it too far, and it just was a really big, really big, bad mess, and she said enough, and we moved to the babysitters for a while, but now we're out, and we have our own apartment. Did, uh, did he do anything to the uh, other sisters? Not as far as anybody knows. Mm. Well, sorry that had to happen to you, Amanda. And, that's uh, okay. You're not the dick that did it. And that's uh, that's true, but um, uh, here's what here's what's important: uh, that you don't see all guys as the dick who did it. No, I don't. Yeah, but yeah, you're behaving like you're, you're getting ready. You're, to, you're, to you're, do get, that. you're getting into it, Amanda. Yeah, you really are. You're Thirteen, cool out. Yeah, not really. This guy's put you on autopilot. Do you understand? And mm -hmm. it's and, and you're heading into a mountain. Yeah, that's, I know. That's basically. That's basically what these pricks do, whether it's biological dad or fake daddy. They get in, and it's here's essentially what it is. I mean, me, you're putting your, your finger up somebody, or you're getting them to blow you, or whatever it is the hell you're, you're getting this poor 10-year-old to do. Uh, but essentially, practically what you're doing is this. You're, you're getting them. in, and you're setting, yeah. you're setting them on a course, yeah. whether they're a ship or a plane or whatever analogy you want to use. You're setting them on a course to just run into a mountain that's uh, basically piled high with drugs and guys who drive vans with Bondo on them. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And that's it. So not only do you get to screw them up while you're screwing them up, but you give them this whole legacy. It's great. She can just uh, go uh, She can go get victimized her whole life. I, that's why I want guys like that killed. I have no remorse at all. Put them down. That's it. You screw around with kids, you get put down. I don't care what your excuse is. I don't care. We just We can't chance any more of this. She's going to get pregnant at uh, 15. I mean, God knows you're doing it with a 17-year-old at 13. What do you give it, uh, 11 months until you're pregnant? I mean, that, would three years without getting pregnant for a man to sound like an eternity? Yeah. yeah. You, you buy, uh, statistically? By, uh, yeah. By our standards, certainly. By the radio standards. All right.
People we talk to. And you, and listen, you stupid broads who bring home these guys, please. Why why are you so hell-bent on getting your kids screwed up, because too? Because it was her daddy that set her on autopilot that set things in motion. All right, that's why uh, I'm telling you, when I get in, when I get in power, Drew, it's, uh, it's the, uh, the weed without the seed. I will not recede. I'm just pulling all the weeds. Why don't we leave radio and just go to politics? Okay, that's a fine point. Want to do it? No, because we, we have uh, we have ideas. That's why we wouldn't make it in politics. We got to just sit around and talk about <laughs> take, talk about take lowering polls. taxes. Yeah. <laughs> take polls. <laughs> all right, I want to uh, chicken in every pot and two cars in every garage. All right, Drew, you're gonna clean that uh, no. pot of coffee you spilled on your I'm chest. Uh, let off. it stay in there nicely. All right, we'll uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll speak to Jason. What kind of signals should men give women, especially in the workplace? Is that right? That's what you want to know, Jason? Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hey, you could, uh, I just show my pants around my ankles. Yeah, but think how many times you've been arrested for that. All right, you're right. You have five seconds. Love line with Adam Coral and Dr. Three, Drew. Two. Back in a minute. One. Hey. Hey there. It's the love line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Trying to figure out from uh, the ladies tonight uh, how they how they convey to a man that they're interested in a subtle way. And again, not at a nightclub when they've uh, had a half bottle of scotch to their head, but I just mean, uh, you know, work, wherever. Meet a guy chance encounter how do you let him know because uh, so many of those moments slip away god knows what uh you, you know you know what i mean well, sometimes it needs to be a pattern too you know it can't be just a single moment right okay who are we talking to jason jason yeah <clears throat> you're 26 what kind yep. of signals should a man uh, give a woman especially in work you interested in somebody in the workplace um oh well, actually a couple no oh, couple couple two or three what kind of signals have they given you um just you know oh, you're so intelligent um mm-hmm. guys like you just don't talk like that and they're usually just they don't care they're just all they care about is what they're doing that night about drinking and who they're having sex with and, and they whatnot. give you the, the touch and drag uh, i haven't really i've had that but it ends up usually being from the women that are with somebody or who are married it's well, what about that Adam? it's the it, married women are doing this yeah. to you no matter where I've ever worked at. That's just, that's just getting a vicarious sort of... And it seems like the married women or the women that are already taken, I guess you could say, are with somebody, always yeah. seem to be more open and touch and drag. I don't ever see... Yeah, that, that, that's, maybe a, Jason, though, that's maybe. a little compensation. That yeah. is sort of... Uh, <laughs> You Why know, do they feel secure? Right. They're already secure in their relationships, and they feel they can be more open. But maybe... There's yeah. that, and they want... Women like a little intrigue and a little spice. They don't necessarily have to act on it. And I'll, I'll I'll give you an example of that. Women love reading those Harlequin romances, you know, where there's some uh, farm hand who uh, has uh, one one shoulders dropped on his uh, overalls and he's uh, got heaving packs and all. And once in a while, I see one of those things at the supermarket, and I go. Hey, I, you know, maybe I could whack off to this. So I, I pick it up and I start looking through it. And it's like, there's not a goddamn picture in this whole book. And then I think to myself, what the, who, how could this be titillating? There's no pictures in it. Exactly. You're just reading about uh, Rudolfo, who uh, took uh, the uh, lily-skinned maiden to his uh, gardening shed and, you know, gave her what for. And uh, women get excited by this. And the reason the women get excited because it, it that's all it takes for them. They don't need to actually have someone put their hand down their pants. That that, that can be a relationship. Right. And right. So they could have some sort of semi-crappy marriage that they go home to every night and then have some cute guy who they flirt with at work, and that could round things out for them. That could be enough. That just kind of gets them riled up for when they go home. Like if that. a guy had a crappy relationship at home and there was some cute chick at work and they were having something, it would quickly escalate to something. But the, he would right. end up going home with her probably or something. Yeah. Right. But I don't know. I worked in an airport. I get uh, flight attendants coming up to me all the time. These are a couple of the girls that come up to me quite a bit. Yeah, well, it's, if they... It's, it's a real drag. I mean, you know. If they come up it's to you... Drag. Oh, they're, oh, they're oh the married they're ones. Taking, yeah. Well, the married ones and even the ones that... There is one that she's very kind of... Um, 
touchy feely, but it sometimes seems like she's kind of like that way to everybody. All right. Well, well, what, what, what are you asking there? us, Jason? I, I, you... I don't know. Jason, I don't, I don't it, know. I mean, I it, guess maybe I'm clueless on on a lot of relationships that I've had in the past too, on and just how I've. I've I've used personals before to find women, and that was like end up being the worst way to ever find a woman. But then trying to find a woman through a nightclub is not a good way. Work is real tough. All right, listen. If if a woman comes up to you who's not married, who seems to be getting touchy feely or making conversation, or even just comes up to you, then just uh, keep keep moving along with with the conversation. See what happens. Mm. I don't I don't know what he's asking, oh, yeah. but. Uh, he wove in using the personals about 10 minutes into the uh, conversation. Yeah. That's not a good sign. I've never been that desperate. I thought about one of those dating services once, sitting alone at a Mexican takeout place, reading it. Uh, oh, God. I should have killed myself a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to name my next book. <laughs> Melanie. Hi. Yeah, if I killed myself tomorrow, it would be the 101st time I killed myself. Melanie? Yeah, hi, Adam. You're 24. Hi, Good. How do you let a uh, guy know you're into him? It's it's really hard in the workplace with the sexual harassment, I would think. Uh, because Listen, Screwball, how do you let a guy know you're interested in him? Well, I'm just saying it's hard at work. I mean, you can, you, you, well, see, I'm married, but you can try, you know, just talking or... Hold on, let me talk slower. Talk. <laughs> you can try just talking or just like... Okay. Inconspicuous flirting, like I don't know, passing by them like or, or behind a curtain. Them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Melanie. What's your question? What's your okay. question? Um, Hold on. <laughs> Did we get that on? I want to record that and play it back. We we'll get a transcription of that. All right. So you, you have no way of letting a man know you're attracted to him. It's just I don't know how to explain it. Okay. At work. It's well, here's the deal about men. Stop with the work. A, Forget <laughs> about work. Just okay. how do you let? I I have not said work in a half hour. How do you let a guy know you're attracted to him? And, and uh, you need to know that for men, you've got to be explicit. Jeez. To say to say you just pass by and flirt, that means nothing to a man. Yeah, we, we can get nothing out of that. That means absolutely nothing. No, meaning we can't learn anything out right. of it. Uh, off it. Also, we don't even know what that means. No. I don't know what that means. All right. I mean? So, Melanie, do you have an answer? Um, but not one that no. you like. All right, what's probably. your question? Okay. I should mention work again. <laughs> what's your question? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm 14 and a half weeks pregnant, yes. and I'm trying to be very careful with my pregnancy. Um, Why? You know, to keep the baby safe. And my question is, how long is it safe for my husband and I to keep making love? Well, where... no, wait a minute. It, you're, you sound like you're saying you're trying to keep this pregnancy safe, safer than any other mother, mother would? Well, no, I'm just, I'm, this is my first pregnancy. Yeah. And I just, my doctor's really vague about it, and I just don't want to do anything to What did he or she say? Um, well, actually, he's just like, well, as long as it's okay for you, then it should be all right. That's correct. You can go all the way to the end of the pregnancy if, if it's okay for you. If you don't have preterm labor, you don't have bleeding, you don't have pain, things seem to be going along okay, just keep checking in with your uh, obstetrician about it. Drew's wife uh, had his kid C-section, so he was actually getting her during, during the birth. <laughs> N no. Oh, yeah. No, because she had triplets and all preterm labor for like three months. Oh, really? No. no. Well, so it was like a, those are big hooker months for you. <laughs> Drew's, uh, Drew's got a lot of stress, and it's important that he blow it off every once in a while. Beg your pardon? Yeah. All right, Melanie. Okay, you know what? Adam, Thanks for the insight. Really quick, Adam. Yeah. Um, a while ago, because um, I live in Chicago, so it's kind of, we get it on delay, so I don't know exactly when the show takes place, but you had said something about you wanted to come out with prescription bottles with adult caps that you can take on and off. Yes. And what we have in Chicago at the pharmacies is once you get the childproof cap off, mm -hmm. you flip it upside down, and it just screws on and off. Genius. Melanie, all, all pharmacies have that. They do? Yeah. How come I don't have that? Because you haven't tried flipping it over, probably. Well, you're, you're not. Ta you're talking about this, the over-the-counter stuff. She's talking about prescription bottles. I, all, all I'm saying is, is I, whether everything is childproof now. Yeah. Lighters are childproof. You, Drew, you, you know these lighters. Yeah. You flick. You get one shot. Anyone who's ever lit in, lit one of these lighters, these disposable lighters, knows. That they don't work from flint and butane; they just work off a of friction. Uh. If you rub the, th you, you got to rub the thing for like twenty minutes to get the thing to light. Uh. I mean, just flip, 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 right? right. Now, with the childproof ones, you flip it once and you have to reset it. Uh. So, 
To light a cigarette takes uh, 15 to 20 minutes. To light a cigar, you have to quit your job. <laughs> you just you have to you, you just can't do it. So like right. flip, reset, right. flip, reset. Right. And I think to myself, I don't have kids. And how many kids can figure out the flip part but not the reset part? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean? You give a lighter. It takes some physical dexterity, some hand-eye coordination. Just do the flip and hold on one of these disposable lighters. The part about uh, resetting it, that ain't much to figure out if you can get the flip and hold part. I don't like that. I don't want. Ch I want a whole store of crap that is not childproof. I'm tired of wrestling with bottles. I'm tired of wrestling with lighters. I'm tired of riding in the back of goddamn cars where the window won't go down because some idiot jumped out of it 20 years ago. I'm tired of it. I want an adult world. You look after your own kids. That's not my job. Why do I got to suffer because everyone's a bad parent? Drew, seriously, how many times have we ridden in the back of the car? Remember when you were sick and we are driving the back of that, oh, that car? The window wouldn't come down. Poor Dredd to shove his wedge his face out the back of the thing. To vomit. Everything is kid-proof in this world. I'm tired I, of it. I like that. I don't. All right, you're lucky we're late for break. I maybe come back with this. Well, Lauren, be right back in a minute. We got to take a little ten-second timeout that uh, because of uh, last hour's rant, I'm running a little bit late for. So we'll take a quick ten seconds, and we'll be back with more Love Line in a second. This is Love Line on Radio Station. This is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That be Dr. Drew. Did you clean your shirt up, Drew? No, it's a nice big stain right here. See? <laughs> here. <laughs> How do you get coffee out of a yeah, light blue know. shirt? I don't know. You're screwed. That's it. You know what my technique is? Mm. Wash it and lock it in. That's what I do. Throw it right in the dryer and really lock that stain mm, in. Nice. I screw up every shirt I, I wash. It's a mess. You know what, I, you know what my technique for uh, nice shirts is now? Yeah. I take them to the uh, dry cleaner. Extra starch. You can wear the shirt like 15 times. It oh, still yeah. looks good. Yeah, yeah. And then you just pile on the deodorant. You dump a bunch of talc down your pants. You go with extra starch. You wear the hell out of the shirt. You could also just buy a polyester mix. Yeah, that. I like that. Yeah. What's that What's that one called? Polyester. Rayon. Polyester. <laughs> Rayon. <laughs> That's multiple esters. Yeah. More than one ester. Is that what that means? Mm. Steph. Yes. You're 22. Yeah. What's going on? How do you let a how do how, how do you let a guy know you're interested? Oh, uh, geez. Um, you talk about uh, how bad dating is at your campus. Really? Uh, yeah. And then that sort of, um, uh, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I went to the girls' school, so how do I know? All right. I, I didn't. Uh, it, it's like I, I, I. It's like I took some trig equation yeah. and leveled it on every. Uh, it's a bunch of twenty-year-old chicks. I'm just asking, how do you let a guy know when you're interested? And everyone's like, blah, 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 blah. Jesus Sorry, Christ! Yeah. You guys what, are pathetic. What girls' school did you go to? Uh, I won't say because Dr. Drew, I've met you before. <laughs> okay. So what's going on? Um, what, what the hell? What you do with her? Uh, it must be on the school. I've, I've spoken at a few girls' women's schools. You like, have high schools. Where was I? How come you go to the <laughs> chick schools without me? Days. What's that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, how I got a test back, and I don't know why it's borderline positive. It's like what's borderline positive? Um, HIV. Borderline positive. What does that mean? I don't know. Somebody told me that. And what do you mean? Somebody told you that? Help the me. technician and technician? they're like, is it positive or negative? And we're like, well. We have to test you again. I, mean, I don't want to test again. Oh, well, you got to. That, test that again. means positive. No, it doesn't necessarily. What are your risks? Um, I guess when I was younger, I wasn't very careful. You were sexually active. Yeah. With IV drug users. No. With lots of guys. Yeah. How many? Uh, probably like six. Oh. 
That's not that funny, guys. What? Were, were these guys uh, gay or bi or no. Ivy drug users? I don't think so. Well, what are you worried about? And you were back a, and get retested. Get a viral load test. I, I, I'm sure it will be negative. Oh, okay. Don't just get the antibody. Why you get, get some the... sort of DNA, some sort of specific marker for HIV? Why did you get tested in the first place? Oh, uh, I was just curious. And the guy said you're border. The guy did not say you're borderline. Yeah. Uh, I just. Uh, yeah. That's why I was like, but how could I be borderline? What do you mean? Technician said that. that... Um, the one who gave me the test, and I was asking him what, what was this meaning. You mean it's a, 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 a these aren't technicians. They, we, who, who, where was this test done? Uh, at my college. At your college, and so it was what a nurse practitioner or a doctor? Yeah, I think nurse practitioner. Is this an all-girls junior college no, you go to? No, Is no, that no, possible? No, different, different. Going okay. To a different school. Steph, uh, pay attention, would you? Okay. Uh, so, so here, here's how it goes. A, uh, you're borderline. We got the results of your test. Now, here's your job. Borderline. What does that mean? Yeah. Did they do a Western blot test or not? Let's, what can I do to turn this into a definitive test? And that would be getting some yeah, HIV the specific. I make sure I don't. It's going to be negative. Go get the right testing done, okay? okay? All right. All right. You're so. fine. You've been with a couple of guys. They're all <clears throat> in a uh, <clears throat> low risk category. Don't worry about it. Well, do what's right. But the probability, the predictive value of a borderline test in somebody who's not at risk, I would think would be very low. What? Right. Uh, what? I, I don't even. I don't understand the borderline. I don't know either. If, they do they ever some, say that? Not in my experience. Either, you're either in or you're out, aren't uh, you? Well, yeah. Aren't you? Basically. How do they do that test? It's an antibody test. And so either you possess it or you don't. That's right. Well, what could borderline? Oh, mm. they they must not have said borderline. Yeah. Yeah, I think Steph's got some issues, and she may have cooked that one up. Hmm. No, nah, but uh, let's show, whatever. She needs to go back and get it more clear, get clarified. Joanna? Yeah, hi. You're 17. Hi. Um, I was calling to ask a few questions and a few comments. All right. Um, how, do you, I, how do you let a guy know when you're interested in it? I knew you were going to ask. Um, <laughs> what are you, Yuri Geller? I've been asking it all night. <laughs> um, sometimes, I don't know, I just pay attention to him. Just give him a lot of attention and laugh a lot. Laugh a lot. You mentioned that, Adam. So yeah. you go. Um, Laughing is good. Okay, um, I bought your guys' book. It's, like, really good. I couldn't put it down. Um, wow. I bought it earlier this month. Oh, um, thanks. Also, um... <laughs> we plugged the hell out of that thing on this show, don't we? <laughs> on this show? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's always... We never stop talking Do about it. Do you have a book? It. Yeah. Okay. Also, um, uh, I wanted to say, Adam, you're, like, really funny, and you shouldn't get down on yourself about your hair and teeth, because, you know, you're a cool guy. Your what? My about hair. your hair and teeth? Yeah. You know how you always say stuff about that? Well, well I got the Brillo head and the buck tooth. <laughs> you're really a cool guy, so, I mean, that doesn't matter. Yeah. And Dr. I was just saying, I could, I could sort of overcome that handicap? <laughs> no. Um, Dr. Drew? Yeah. Oh. Um, I wanted to say that, like, you're a real inspiration, and, mm -hmm. um, like, I want to be a psychiatrist myself, so... I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm an internist. But huh? go ahead and go to psychiatry. That'd be fine. Joanna, you're really batting a thousand with these compliments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, anyway. Okay, so last year I called, um, like, this date, and I asked, I had a questions about my dad, and I had told you guys that he was, um, he was, he was, like, he had an affair when I was younger, and I had saw him with a lady, and you started, like, bagging on my, uh, Adam started bagging on my, uh, heritage. Your heritage? Yeah, like, because, um, you asked where my dad was from, and you, and I told you Nicaragua, and you I don't know. I don't think you remember, but... Wait, you said it was from, it was from uh, Nicaragua? Nicaragua. Right. Okay, and um, and so anyway, I had told you guys he had that whole issue. I had a whole issue, and he had just brought over his family because my parents are separated. And he was living with them, so I was like, you know, I had a lot of anger with him. And I wanted to tell you guys that, you know, everything has kind of calmed down. Good. But Good. now there's, like, something else. Like, after I read your book, I realized how, like, important and how bad, you know molestation is and stuff like that yeah. so um my sister had told me a few years ago like maybe five or so that my dad had molested her and my other sister oh, God. and uh <laughs> that just like really i don't know that yeah. just don't don't out. judge it drew it's a cultural thing <laughs> you can't judge that <laughs> Go ahead. That's awful. At least you escaped that that's he lucky. didn't molest you yeah i don't i mean i don't remember anything i mean because 
Both well, my sisters got molested and only one remembers. Oftentimes, they how do you how do you know both of them got it then? Because my because my other one, like they shared a room together, so like I guess he did it at the same time and one remembers it oh. happening to both of them. Oh. Well, he's um, and you know I'm trying to get her into therapy. Good, good. So um, I'm like, well, these abusers right. sometimes. How many kids does your dad have? Oh my god. He has five with my mom and four with, oh, with my mom. Oh, yeah, that's why that Nicaragua is such a paradise. Oh. <laughs> Screw-ups having kids. Yeah, it's true. He's How the hell did he get into this country? I don't know. He just came home. Oh, we got to beef up the border. Yeah, he used to be an alcoholic, too, so that makes oh, sense. Oh, please. Oh, this kills me. Yeah. Um, so my question was, like, um, could he have molested me, or, you know, how do I act around he him? He could but have, but I doubt it. Unless there's something you can tell us about how you conduct yourself in relationships that would lead us to believe that there's something there that's uh, screwing that capacity up. Just just go uh, with now. I, I doubt it, because guys that do this kind of abusing usually select specific kids for the victimization. Yeah. Hey, Drew? Yeah. I don't know why. This just popped in my head. I was thinking about it the other day. It's an interesting question to ask people. Uh -huh. Would you rather hear... Well, let's say watch or listen to a tape or video of an hour of the best things people have ever said about you or an hour of the worst. What do you, what do you think people would go with? I, I know it depends on the person. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, it, it, it could be, I mean, it could be entertaining. You could have some, um, you know, a kindergarten teacher explaining to your mom in uh, 1963 yeah. that uh, you were just basically a loser. Yeah. Or uh, it could be some girlfriend telling another girlfriend something horrible about you in junior high. It'd be entertaining. On the other hand, you could have some, <laughs> there could be some really brutal ass on there, yeah. too. Yeah. God knows. On the other hand, the complimentary stuff would be nice. But useless. It'd probably be useless, and you might get bored of it after after yeah. 10 minutes. I mean, it, it'd be a nice little ego boost. Well, I, I, I'd say about 70, I'd say 65, 70% of the people would go with the positive. Really? Well, the yeah, negative I do. stuff would be useless as well. No, it'd be useful. Well, it, What somebody said negative about you in junior high? Well, but my from, some insight. From, a, from a sort of but who cares psychological perspective, like if somebody said... If enough people said bo, I'd be I, I I'd go out and do I'd make a move with the deodorant or the showering or something. If enough people talked about bad breath, you know what I mean. If enough people talked about uh, you know I, I might get I might do everything from get braces to pr pluck my eyebrows to shower, depending on what the outcome was. As it is now, I just assume no one cares, and I keep moving on. It could actually the negative would be much more useful. It really would. But the positive would make you feel a lot better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And a positive would be good just to have in your drawer, you know? <laughs> Whenever you felt crappy or you got fired or something, you just go home and pop it in the cassette. There's enough negative things in this world. Why would you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I mean, going. Most of us have poor self-esteem as it is. Okay, so what about what about this? Yeah. What about a 50-50 reel? Then 10 what, minutes negative, you have no 10 question, minutes positive. The question is moot all of a sudden. It is? Oh, yeah. Take calls, huh? All right. <laughs> Please? <laughs> it's a good question, though, huh? Yeah. I'm going to start compiling one on you. <laughs> Mac. Hi. Hey, you're 24. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I'm uh, just thinking about what people might have said. I, I read your guy's book. I bought it a couple weeks ago, and it's awesome. Thank you. It's Thanks. It's like the best one I've, uh, I've ever seen out there. And I just wow. It, so. I'm going to pledge to read that book. <laughs> to figure out what all the buzz is about. Drew makes it nice and serious, and Adam, you lighten it up well. Thanks. Um, anyway, my question is, I was, I was a raised real conservative kind of upbringing where, you know, um, if you even looked at a girl with a lustful thought, you know, you, you felt the fires of hell reaching for you. And uh, my question is, is now I'm 24, and, and it's like uh, any time I get in a relationship and moving towards having sex with them, you know, I was always taught, if, you know, and I just, just was calling to see what Dr. Drew had to say about the whole issue. You're 24 and you're a virgin. Yes. How far have you gotten with a woman? Um, uh, not very far. I don't let myself get very far because I, I start feeling all that turmoil and everything. Do you masturbate? <laughs> <laughs> what about the sperm oil you feel on your belly? Uh, no, after I prefer Aunt Jemima with the syrup, you know? Just put a picture right out there on the table. Hey, so you, you, you do masturbate, though, right? Yeah. Right. Isn't that sinful? I, I I don't know. Was it the lesser of two evils, you know? 
That's what well, he says. Well, you got to do one. Either you're offending the Lord or you're not. Right, you know. You understand? Yeah. The Lord has two modes. Deal, so. It's uh, offended mode and uh, this sort of docile, not interested. Yeah. Those are the mo those are the Lord's two modes. <laughs> so uh, whacking off, you're still offending him. Who cares mm. about the Greek? Uh, Mac? Yeah. Jeez, imagine a guy named Mac with a name, uh, Virgin. No guy, usually guys named Mac, by the time they're 14, uh, get something off the babysitter. Hey, you see, now you're all freaked out. Now what's, I don't understand what the question is. Hey, go meet a girl you like, have a nice relationship, and get laid. Yeah, I mean, I wish everybody were like Mac. Sure, me too, except for me. Yeah. That's right. More, sure, more but I mean, me. like, I've always was raised, though, that, like, you know, you, you, you always, like, I don't know if you know J Dane, James Dobson, he's, like, the psychologist and everything. He's always got a billion statistics how people who sleep with uh, the person they love before they're married end up getting divorced and stuff like that. Yeah, these are people that didn't get laid. <laughs> and they, what, what they're really <laughs> trying to do, to it's like... It's, experience, right. I wanted to, you know... Well, here's the deal. The, the, the majority of people uh, do that before marriage, and the more majority of people get divorced. So the correlation can be there, but it, they could not necessarily be linked events. I'm, you know what I'm going to do, Drew? Yeah. I'm going to write a book about uh, why it's important to have nappy hair. Yeah. Uh, it is actually, it's first off, it's like uh, wearing a helmet. There's a certain protective value you get yes. from the nap on this hair sure. that you fine-haired guys don't get. Yes. Uh, secondly, you can put stuff in it. You know, it'll hold a pencil or yeah. a cigarette lighter, if something I, like I, that. Uh, surprises once in a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wait, I, I'm going it, to, it's like, like it, 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 Nest of Robins. Yeah. Hey, here's what I, I can't stand about all these assholes that write books. It, it's it's always like uh, they didn't get any 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 poontang in high school, and now they got to write a book about why it's bad to get laid. You know, show me some big tan guy with biceps who writes a book about not getting laid. Where's that guy? You see the guy, the pictures of these uh, these pussies on the back. Some bald guy with uh, effed up teeth wearing some bifocals. Of course, it's bad to get laid. You never got laid. Why don't you go out and get laid once before you write the book on it? Turtleneck with the uh, corduroy blazer with the pant, those uh, suede patches on the sleeves. Poor Mac over here reads all that garbage. They... Listen, everybody, with the religion, sprinkle. Use religion like, uh, use it like uh, pepper. Just sprinkle it on. But don't, don't dump it all over the kid. It screws him up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mac over here is twin. It's so interesting that we live in a world that's so devoid of repression right now. It's almost like, uh, well, you mean that you can actually turn a kid out like that? How would you do that in today's world? How do you, how do, you do that? Yeah, no cable. That's it. Hey, isn't it? Uh, Ann mentions Passover tonight. Yeah. Is that? Didn't, don't you do? Do you do something for Passover, Drew? Uh, what is the deal? How does Passover work? Seder. Seder. Yeah. Seder. I hardly know her. A, what a big a big dinner with all sorts of symbolic food and readings and high the matzah and all that's that. Great, yeah. and it's eat. And it's, uh, it's a Jew's two favorite things: reading and eating. And it's all done over the table. And complaining about the food. Hey, read the book for a while. I'm tired. I'm going to eat. <laughs> all right, I'll read it now. You eat. And uh, do they hide any matzah? Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. See, I'd hide the matzah and get stoned and forget about it, and then I have rats. <laughs> So you hide the matzah. Do they ever lose the matzah or they just hide it? I, I'm sure it's ultimately found. And then the kids find and, it and they uh, give them money? Oh, yeah. And then w what else? Is it, isn't it so somebody passes over your house? Right. Who? The God. God. So he, didn't, he killed all the Egyptian sons but none of the Jewish sons. Uh, they put blood on the door of the lamb and all that. It's a big story. Read right. the Bible sometimes. Very important stuff. Yeah. I'm sure it all went down exactly that way. You know what's interesting about the Bible? The more I learn about people... The more I'm convinced that there's tremendous accuracy in the Bible what do you about, mean? about people and about wisdom, about their behavior. Oh yeah, and, and I mean it's it's thousands of generations of observation packed into a little book. And uh, guess what? They knew what they were talking about when they wrote that down. Well, listen, they had the right idea about uh, you know, thou shalt not steal or murder or covet your neighbor's cow or yeah. oxen or whatever the hell yeah. wife. I think they put the oxen in front of the wife, by the way, which is funny. The Bible is like uh, kind of insulting. To, to chicks. Uh, don't covet your neighbor's oxen. Oh, and or his wife. <laughs> Whichever one weighs more, covet the least. Are you ready to move forward here, Drew? Yeah. So you didn't do anything for the Passover? Uh -huh. The Jews get nutty on Passover. Yeah. The Jews aren't that religious. I mean, not, you know, the Hollywood, it's all Jews. Everyone I work with, everyone's Jewish, and all they do is sin. Oh. <laughs> Uh, they just sin, sin, sin. Nothing but sin. But when Passover comes along, they all freak out. Oh, no, I gotta go. I gotta make it to Passover. I gotta, I gotta go to Seder. Mm -hmm. Why? They don't care about it. The other, 
uh, 300 and some odd days of the year. It's a big ceremony. Yeah, but, they, they, you know, Jews are more you, hot and cold than other religions. Oh, yeah. They, they get they get more freaked out over the one night, and then well, the they, rituals, they totally the, abandon it the rest the of the time. The rituals is the big deal. Yeah. yeah the rituals, the tradition. It's great. And we got some You're, you're confusing Yom Kippur, where they, where they really freak out. Yeah. That, that's the day of, of forgiveness and the atonement. Yeah, that's good, too. That's a different one. Right. Uh, I've been screwing clients uh, all month long, and uh, now I'm going to uh, eat some... Uh, not eat. We're talking oh, I'm not going to eat, and that'll make it all better. Paige. Yeah. You're 16. Yes, I am. What's going on? Um, I've got a question. You were talking about signs that girls give to guys. What are some signs that guys could give to girls? Mm, they're overt. Yeah, guys don't have to. I mean... Yeah, I've never, like... Ha <laughs> 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 Very funny. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't guess I don't have much experience with it. Guys will just start bringing up sex. <laughs> they'll just start weaving stuff into, you know, they'll say like, hey, you look hot in that. It's just saying stuff like that. Or I heard you were and blah, blah. Or, you know, you know they, they, they just get kind of overt with it. Mm-hmm. They're not subtle. We don't need, you, you girls don't need to figure out, guys. Assume... Here's what you need to do. Uh, here's what you should spend more time on. Figure out whether guys are gay or not. And yeah. Once you get that down, you're in. <laughs> and that's an easy one. I guess so. And the guy uses a fabulous more than a once a week. The word fabulous, uh-huh. gay. Yeah, of course. That's all you need to know. All right, so if he's straight, he's in. Uh-huh. What's well, next? It hasn't always been that way with me, I suppose. What's I had, bad, had really bad luck with that. Why? What's the matter? How come? I don't know. <laughs> I just have had bad luck. I've never actually had a relationship. Really? Yeah. Well, you're 16. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm like a big time advocate for age, for non-age discrimination. Had you had a relationship by the time you were 16, Adam? Huh? Hold on. She's a big time advocate for non-age discrimination? What does that mean? What does that mean? It means I might be 16, like, technically, but um, I hang out with people way older than me. And uh, Paige? What? Uh, you're, 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 you're cruising for a raping. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're biological development. But do something. the thing is, I'm interested in someone who's 14. Oh, boy. Oh. What's the matter with Paige? Good to it, eh? Paige, what is up with you? I don't know. You into Wicca? <laughs> no, not really. What religion are you into? I'm a strict atheist. Uh-oh. Big thinker. Yeah. These atheists are always thinkers. Uh-huh. Uh, your parents good? Yeah, I'm a suburbanite. You ever been? You, have you ever been with a guy? I mean, had a boyfriend or dated or anything Not like that? Since fifth grade, huh? Not since fifth grade. No. And basically, no. Well, who's this fourteen-year-old? He's just—he's a friend of mine that um, I'm, I see him every now and then d- during school, and yeah. I just really have a big, humongous like crush. On yeah, him, but do you think you have a crush just because you're kind of desperate? I don't know. See, I was really obsessed with this one guy who was 26 for, Ooh. like, two years. And I think that yeah. was what happened when I was desperate. Oh, well, you really bounce around. Yes, yeah. yes, I for do. For two years? So you were 14, you're obsessed with the guy who's 26? Yeah. Wow. How's your weight? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, 5'8", so I'm a pretty big girl. But I'm not, like, blubber. How much you weigh? I'm not telling. I'm on the radio. Because right. my friends listen to the station. All right, I'm going to do the math here. Five, eight, one, two, seven, three, eight. Uh, 167. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you go for that. Oh, yeah, well, you just good. bought you just bought 20 pounds. Oh, great. 187. I can stop now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I if if you celebrate at 167, uh, you immediately add 20 pounds. Of course. All right, I'm going to deduct an inch and a half from the height. We'll get you down to uh, five, six and a half. All right, so Paige, mm-hmm. uh, I I don't know why, but I heard it. I heard it in your voice, and um, you're kind of all over the place. Why don't Why don't you just uh, focus on guys, you know, your own age, and and if you if you got a weight issue, you can you can work on that. But it, you know, they're guys who, uh, who where that's not going to be a stumbling block for them. Well, yeah, I don't really have a weight issue though. I mean. Okay. I have like, really high self-esteem and everything, yeah. so don't, that's not the problem, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I... Do you buy the self-esteem part? No, not at all. You don't? Uh-uh. You know what the problem with with self-esteem? Other people will tell you what kind of self-esteem you have, well, probably unfortunately. Well, probably being 16 and enlightened is uh, you have to have insight. And 16 is a tough age to have real objective insight about what's going on with you. Right. 
So. Isn't that weird, though, that other people sort of dictate your self-esteem? Not that age. No, it, it, when she's 19, she'll know what her esteem is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it, it's a combo. Your self-esteem can be measured by um, who wants to screw you and how much you're getting paid. Not necessarily to screw, but just in general. No. no yeah. You no, take those two no. things. You weigh them out. That's how you can tell. Uh, yeah, thanks, Drew. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. If, yeah, if, people who crap your self-esteem, no matter how much that's going on, it still needs to be more. Yeah, all right. But uh, that certainly uh, takes some of the sting off it. A bunch of people chasing around no, naked. necessarily. With uh, suitcases full of money. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk to people who whom that happens. All right. We'll be back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Hey, that Love Line show. Phone number. I don't forget about it. I was sitting around watching, uh, sitcoms tonight. I never do that. I'm never home yeah. anymore. But uh, I got home at like 6 o'clock tonight, and I felt like uh, I had taken the day off of work. And uh, was, we took a nap, sat around for a couple hours. I was watching sitcoms. Uh, boy, do sitcoms suck. Yeah. I got to tell you. Listen, Th- all you uh, network TV people, you better get your heads out of your asses. That, that junk that you're putting on, that you're calling uh, entertainment, it's bad. It's real bad. All it is... It, it's it's like it, it's formatically it's all the same thing. It's just like joke joke laugh joke joke laugh joke laugh joke. The same music rolling in and everything. Same thing coming out. It's it's garbage. Yeah, yeah. It, it's horrible. And uh, the networks are going to get their ass kicked real soon. I give it a few more years. What's on cable is better than what's on the networks now, and it's and it's going faster that direction. And networks just keep cranking out the sitcoms, and it's the same one. It is the same. They're all exactly the same. Bunch of good-looking people with clear skin sitting around talking about nothing. Everyone is sharp as a goddamn thumbtack, and no one ever laughs at anyone else's jokes. Which one? Which one are you talking about particularly? Uh, tonight, I was I was watching. Uh, well, I don't want to mention the one because we had our guests out here, but uh, the other one I was watching was uh, the new. Uh, a- uh, was it ABC? You know, it's uh, like uh, it's about the. Oh, it's yeah. like. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, yeah, the Jennifer Grey one. Yeah. And what happened to Jennifer Grey? She didn't look the same. She, so she's a completely different person. What to her? I, I don't know. <laughs> guys I, don't do that. Guys, uh, you know what guys do? They get fat. Yeah. What, Jennifer Grey does not look like Jennifer Grey anymore. No, have you seen her on TV? You're what my happened? stern but groovy master. That is not yeah. the woman that once lusted after yeah, me. What happened to her? Did you see her? She, she didn't look bad. It just didn't look like her. No. How do you do that? Well, I mean, you get a nose job, you get a tan, and you change your hair. And the nose job was a long time ago, before. Right. So she hasn't changed since she was up here. Have you seen her on TV? Yeah. D- I didn't recognize her. You're kidding. Yeah. No, I, I, she didn't. She didn't look same. She doesn't look bad. She looks good. But it's like, um, it, it's like it, it. It looks like somebody else. Yeah. No, anyway. She just turned 38. Wow, she's tight. I sit there watching it with my girlfriend. It was like it took about ten minutes. Isn't that the one who likes you? I don't know. It's hard to keep track. <laughs> she likes us so much that she declined uh, our invitation to come up did here. Did she? Did she do yeah, it? Yeah. She's oh, she did? she did. She's had enough of Adam's ass. Well, You're my stern but groovy master, Adam. <laughs> she probably didn't want to be tortured by my uh, my physical prowess. Oh. You know, you know that feeling when you want something so badly. Did I wear tux? Jesus, I don't remember that. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Must have been a little uncomfortable last time she was here. I kind of remember being f- the, uh, uncomfortable feeling. Really? Uh, oh, she don't read anything. No, it's it? true. It's you. Yeah, actually, why? Yeah, it was a little uncomfortable last time. Why was it uncomfortable? We're damn tuxedo in here. Well, the chick liked me. I want to give her a thrill. So. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you know what I look like in a tux, and I mean, you know, I'm hot. I'm really hot. That was hot. a bad tux. Even a you bad. Like ruffles and stuff. <laughs> I can't. Re- I vaguely remember that. I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I must have had. More, I, I must have had more time during the day 
back then. And why did I wear the tux? If it, was that the first time I met her? Or no, it was the second time. Ah. And there were sparks the first time. So. Ah, but the second time, mm -hmm. I pushed too hard. You did. Yeah, and that must have been it. Yeah. Okay. So she's, uh, she's, she's a scorn lover. Yeah. Okay. She's had enough. Well, fine. I give the show ten minutes. <laughs> I really do. Rebecca. Hi. You're 27. Yes. What's going on? Rebecca? Yes. What's going on? Um, when you want to give a guy a sign that you really like him, um, like where I work, there's a lot of guys, and one particular wears a cowboy hat every day. I always tell him he has a beautiful cowboy hat. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I wear my cowboy hat when, in the work every day. We don't work together, do we? No, we don't. Yeah. It's not and me. I help them stock shelves, you know. Uh huh. I just hang out with the guys. So hanging out. How about any kind of touch that a guy should think of as uh, being particularly? I don't touch. Yeah. I don't. You know, I think that's like um, sexual harassment. If you touch the guy. No, it is not sexual harassment if you touch him. Where I work, yeah, it is. No, it is not. That's what they told us. Listen, if he if he tells a joke and you put his your arm on his shoulder and laugh, that is not sexual harassment. Where do you work? Um, have you ever heard of Meyer? No. -er. Meyer. No. Okay, it's a department store and a grocery store all rolled into one. Oh, we're in the middle of the country somewhere. That's that's genius. So I I can buy. I can buy like uh, Your chub, chub pack chub, underwear, yeah. Chub pack underwear and, and chub pack ground beef. Exactly. Yeah. Bag of oranges. I don't know. I, I know it doesn't sit well for me. I'm buying like uh, socks and sorbet. <laughs> See, that's alliteration. That's good radio, yeah. right, no, there. No, no, right the, there. Write that down. That's good radio. Forget radio. It's that's a name for a, a department store. Socks and sorbet. There you go. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah, you uh, can buy your hardware. And your underwear. All right. All right. All right. All right. Fantastic. All right, Rebecca. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Appreciate that. There's no help at all. Compliment his cowboy hat. <laughs> you women are so useless. I got one decent answer out of you the whole night. I knew this would be worthless. Ray uh, Raina? Yeah, Raina. You're 18. Yep. What's going on? Okay. Um, I have a friend that I, we've been uh, close for about three and a half years. The past year, he's been dating a girl that I've disapproved of since they first started, but I kept him mom because it's not my business. Why do you disapprove? She's, when they started dating, he was 20 and she was 14. Mm. I disapprove too. <laughs> yeah, see, but because he's very hard-headed and he's stuck on, you know, she doesn't act 14 and, and you know, hey, now... You know what? Uh, th that, is, that is a statement that does not... Uh, now, let me explain it's, it's why. In, invalid. Me, invalid statement. Let me explain uh, why. Under all circumstances. Here's why she doesn't act 14. Because she's blowing a 20-year-old in a van. <sighs> That's no. why. That Part of that is not acting 14. <laughs> I know that. And I explained to her a million Idiot. times. Look, I was that age. I did. It's like, you know, people crazy. who have a, a cat and go, well, he doesn't act like a cat. Yeah. Well, it's not a human being. It's a cat. Oh, that, That's, that's it. <laughs> that, that's that's the same logic. Yeah, it's a, it doesn't act like a 14-year-old. I don't care. It's a 14-year-old. That's the fact. Yeah. He's 21, but the problem oh, he's is... Oh, he's got in jail. That, uh, the problem is their yeah. relationship has stayed out of my eyes for more than one reason. I hate it, and she doesn't like me because I'm so close with him, so we've been separate. We've only crossed paths, I think, three times. Well, now there's a bigger problem, and I've become so furious, and I don't know how to sit him down and get him to listen to me. She may now be pregnant. That's nice. And they're not together anymore. They've broken up. He... I've tried to tell him, you don't think this is a mistake. What are you doing? You know, I've all, I've gotten into tears because I know this hey, is going to... Why, why are you good friends with a prick? Well, he wasn't like this when yeah, he, he, is this. he is this. He is this. He is this. He was dating. He dated a girl. Man, I don't okay. care. He's an idiot. He is what he is. I know he's an what, idiot. What now, do you... Do you like him? Oh, no. He is, right. He has presented guy? himself. He is what he is. <laughs> yeah, Listen, he is what he everybody is. is defined by their actions. You understand? That's yes. it. I, I'm not going to kick him away and say, you know what, you are, are screwing up your life. I hate you. you I'm not going to be your friend no more because that's hey, only what is We don't care if you screwed up his life right now, Raina. Right now you screwed up two people's lives, a 15-year-old and now her child. We're screwing up my life when I'm yeah, paying for the kid. that's a big issue, too. And I just it's need... two. That's the issue. 
I He's a criminal. Advice on how I could tell him because he, I know, I, I, I know he doesn't want her to have it, but he, he keeps it to himself because his, her parents are so approving of this. Ugh. And they love him, and they think uh, this is just a great blessing, and it's just baloney, and I don't know how to get him down. Yeah, Raina, what's up with you that you're so I enmeshed in this guy's life and their because relationship? he's been my, like, best friend for uh, going on four years now, and they were on, they've been this on-and-off relationship for... All right, listen, years. you just tell him once. He doesn't listen, you cut him loose. Everybody with your best friends that you have to cling to for the rest of your life... Best friends like a car. You keep it until it stops running, and then uh, you move on. That's it. That's it. Somebody's a screw up. They're off the list. I got a thousand friends I don't talk to anymore. They're screw ups. I don't want to talk to them. That's all right. You move on. You make new friends. It's like you're disposable, Drew. You have a screw up, yeah. But yeah. then Adam, mm, you too, Bill. Oh, come on, Drew. I'm watching. Quit kidding around. First Jennifer Grey, now you. Yeah, it could be. It's been a tough night. Better change your dress tomorrow night. <laughs> now, Heidi wear isn't, isn't as becoming as I thought it might be. Mm. Yeah, it's more hamper wear. Poor Heidi. <sighs> or what? Oh, Heidi. Heidi, mm. Heidi flies? Mm. Yeah, she's such a jewel. Heidi was, uh, She's all right. Come on. She had a bad addiction problem. All right. What's she doing now? Selling kind of, other kind of pants? Of... Yeah. That sucks. She's going to have to get a job as a secretary somewhere. That's going to be weird. She'll figure out something, right? Yep. Okay. We'll uh, take ourselves a break, and we'll be back. Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Love Line. Just a minute or two. Call 1-800-LOVE-191. Reminds hey. me of my, this, this riff always reminds me that uh, there's an XTC song that sounds like that. Not this part, but the uh, beginning. I like that XTC. Remember them? They're a good band. You ever come on this show? I don't know. Okay. Yes? yes. XTC? Yeah. No. It is the love line. We are uh, going back to the phones. I'm trying to figure out how to do the show uh, just using my feet now. <laughs> I've got to a nice, comfortable position. Drew, I'm going to see if I can mash uh, the no, keyboard. You can, you can just, I can reach if you just sort of no, slide me, over here with your foot. Try here. Oh, wrong one. All right, but that's good. We got a call. We'll see if we can. It, we wanted to go to line three and talk to uh, Mary Ann, but we got, uh, Jana. We, we got Jana. What's going on, Jana? You're 27. Yeah, um, I had a question for Adam. All right. I'm dying to know what your hang-up on paganism is. Paganism? Yeah. He's into paganism. <laughs> That's <laughs> well, my life. My was you're an atheist. Oh, yeah, yeah, I am an atheist, yeah. You seem to bring up paganism a lot in the last uh, few weeks. And uh, not oh. so... Is paganism... Well, is is paganism atheist? Is no. Being an atheist? No, it's a religion. Yeah. So and... it has a definite God concept. And what about Wicca? Wicca is a denomination of witchcraft, which is a denomination of paganism. How many times have I brought up paganism in the last week? You always make a reference to pagans. You made it, I think, uh, about a week ago with somebody no. um, who was having trouble getting guys, and you mentioned oh, that okay. uh, the pagans would come and get her if she was, like, over 200 pounds. Okay. Uh, we'll go with it. doesn't sound very entertaining. I thought I was funny. <laughs> Uh, I should listen to the show. <laughs> I don't want my bubble burst. <laughs> All right, so you're pagan? Yes, I'm it, a witch. It, you're a witch? Yes, which is a denomination of paganism. Oh, wasn't I just talking about Wicca? And... Wicca is one denomination of, uh, wi of witchcraft. Okay, you're a witch, but it, you're not related to witchcraft? <laughs> no, I am a witch. All right, but how, how, which is a right, how fat are you is the real question. I am not fat. Seriously. Seriously. There's no... They throw you out of uh, all these kinds of earth religions if you're not at least 200 pounds. Well, I don't see how the, the dogma and doctrine is related to weight. Well, it's just fat chicks gravitate toward Wicca. Why do you think that is? Well, because thin chicks are like out dating and stuff. They don't need to whip up potions and whatnot. <laughs> well, actually... When they want to get laid, they just go outside the house. Spell work isn't religion. All right. So what do you do as part of your religion? Um, well, we have, uh, there are lots of, uh, different deities, and, I mean, it's, it's... Yeah, well, why bother? It's all a bunch of crap, right? But it's just, just as much as any other religion. I know. It's all a ridiculous waste of time. I mean... Well, I mean, look at Christianity. They've got some really goofy rituals. Uh, the whole thing's a bizarre waste of time. All of it. Just a all bunch of... All of religions? 
Well, if you can keep yourself from killing and effing too much, you don't need it. And for those of you who have difficulty with the killing and the constant effing, uh, you need religion. Fine. I want those people to have religion. So, for for other for for those of us who know who uh, thou shall not kill is sort of a no duh thing. We, we just to, to, now it's more time for us to watch cable TV. <laughs> so you think uh, converting the nation into atheism would be a good idea? Uh, no, not I don't, because there's a lot of idiots out there that need religion. It keeps them in line. I see. Yeah, it's important for them to have something to cling on to. Have the doctrine. Although it doesn't seem to stop them from doing a bunch of stupid things. I think how bad it could be. It could. Yeah, I don't know if I'd buy that. I'd rather just have intelligent people who are had their own moral compass. All right, but anyway, Janet. Anyway, see, listen, it's a big waste of time. So why don't you just go do something important <laughs> instead of messing around with this crap? With the religion. And yeah, of course. I'll keep that in mind. All right. Okay. Good luck. Oh, wait, I'm still using my foot. No, no. we got to get another line one. Uh, line what? Husband, look how long he's been on hold. Line one? Oh, 108 minutes, Adam. And I and my foot knocked him yes. off? Yes. Oh, oh, oh Drew, you should have never Adam. let me do that. I, Are you serious? This guy's been on hold for 108 minutes? Oh, yeah. And my slipper just knocked, <laughs> knocked oh, him off? Oh. oh. What was his name? I, I didn't see. Oh, shit. Oh, is he still there? Right, still there? Wait, you want to hit hold here? Hold, yeah. All right. A? A. Hey. What's your name? John. John. Oh, you poor son of a bitch. You're on hold for 150 minutes? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's horrible. I mean, not, uh, wait a minute. How long is that? 108 minutes, sir. What's your question, John? Uh, yeah, I have this problem. I've been going out with my girlfriend for about three years. And she's everything you'd ever want in a girlfriend. You know, she's beautiful and... Right. Uh, I cheat on her. Yeah. How 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 are you a religious guy? Uh, not too much. Yeah, just a little bit, but not about the cheating stuff. Yeah, no. Right. There's a god. He's just not paying attention. That's his. You have to look the other way when you're banging other chicks. <sighs> well, I wouldn't even say I go that far. What do you do? I do everything but sex. Uh, I don't know if it. That's not cheating. Right, what's the question? What, is the... what he wants to tell you to do? I know you're going to say just stop doing it. I'm just. I know she's talking about marriage and stuff. How old are you? Um, 19. No, please. All right. No. You're, you're, you're too young. You're too young, and your, your behavior suggests you're not ready. Yeah. Uh, that's... You're a young 19-year-old who shouldn't be getting married. And there's no... Listen, the only crime that you're committing is being in a very serious relationship and contemplating marriage. At too young okay. age. But I'm, let's say, down the road, 22. I mean, I don't want to be doing this when I'm married and have kids. You're not going to be married and have kids when you're 22. That's the whole point. Don't even think about it. All right. When you're 30, think about having kids. And call us. Drew will be 72 by then. But call him uh, at the hospital. He won't be working there. He'll be in it. And ask him if it's okay to have kids. All right. All right listen, John. You, you, you're 19. You sound like you're 14. Come on now. Okay. Just don't get anyone pregnant and don't worry about the kids. What What is it with everybody and the kids and the marriage? You know, I'm 19. It's time to settle down. Listen, all you, you're an you're idiots at 19. You are just bona fide jackasses. Not to not to be negative. Not to be negative. I was a jackass. I was 19. I was getting kicked out of my garage. I was cleaning carpet or digging ditches for a living. I was riding on a motorcycle. I was the worst. I, I was a, a bad example for myself. I needed to be separated from myself <laughs> at 19. I wish that could have been done. I, if I, I would have ruined a kid. Hey, let me talk about this fact. Because I'd have like a 14-year-old now, Drew, who'd just be in therapy constantly, or like suicide watch oh, at a please. mental institute. Are you kidding? He'd be on mm, killing sprees. And he'd probably be suing me now, though. Oh, I'd yeah, have, of course. Got a TV and he, show. He'd win. Uh, a guy wanted to know about tonsillectomies. He was, was concerned that it would disrupt his immune system if he had it at an older age. He's 30. No, really no evidence of that, although it's a much bigger deal at 30 than 8. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of pain, a lot of recovery Well, time. they go in through your ass. And he's a, he has sleep apnea, and so the tonsils and the adenoids are obstructing him when he sleeps like you have. And I don't have sleep issue. apnea. It's a serious issue in this case because it can really lead to heart disease and lung disease. And his dad apparently died of lung disease, but that's a different kind of heart, excuse me, heart disease, but that's a different kind of heart disease. Why can it lead to lung disease? It, the, the pressure that people pull against, they, they, they're pulling against a closed orifice, right? I don't have that. I'm just, you asked why they have lung disease. And so when you, they pulling against this, they're creating such intense transthoracic pressures right? they actually create changes in the arteries and in the, in the lungs. Yeah, you think it's strengthening them. No. It's like uh, 
you know, Nautilus for your lungs. No, nope, breaks them down. I don't have that, Drew. I can't breathe through my nose, so I hang my mouth wide open. Yes. But I don't snore. I'm, I'm the greatest guy to sleep with, except for the shedding. <laughs> That's annoying. But I'm good in the fact that I never snore. I don't snore because if you hang your mouth wide open and you pinch your nose off, it's impossible to snore. And the worst you could have is a little breathing, but you'll never get that. Because <laughs> I, I don't have anything going through there. My nose is just for looks. Uh, if, you, if you shine a light up my nostrils, nothing. they stop. Yeah, it's cement. Yeah, it's like, you know, when you see a statue or something. You know, they got the little, it's like a little, they were thinking originally just painting them black. And I realized, nah, that, 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 that call that's one minute. Right. Get, let's call him. Huh? Oh, she took the shit off the line. Well, what about uh, three. Three. six? Three. Anthony? Yeah. What's going on? You're 20 years old, real fast. Okay. Well, see, I got this little, this little sister. She's 13 years old. And I heard previously about these, uh, this other girl that came on here being 13 and having sex. She's, she's pretty much boy crazy. Mm -hmm. And I've tried talking to her. See, she's my stepsister. Mm -hmm. And I've tried talking to, my, to her mom about it, and her mom says it's none of my business. And I'm afraid she's going to make the same mistake that so many other parents do. Like, you know, my daughter won't do that. She knows better. And you've talked to the girl, too. Yes. Well, and it just seems like it, it's not my place, and I don't know what, exactly how to deal with it. I don't know what more you can do except keep, keep bringing it up, keep the pressure on. Yeah. you got to get a uh, shotgun with some rock salt in it. Keep it on the front porch. Yeah, that's it. You talk to her mom. You yeah. talk to her. Mom yeah. tells you to stay out of it. Uh, her mom's just got problems. We, we yeah. worry a little. But uh, who the hell knows? Maybe, right. maybe she's got a side of it. Marianne? Yeah? 19? Yeah. Uh, this is going to be the last time I'm going to try this evening. Okay. What What signs do you give men to show subtle signs that you're interested? Well, um, for basic flirting, you, eye contact. Eye contact. Smiling. Smiling. Right. Um, Jokes. He is salvaged the night. All right. Now, what's your question? Very quick. Um, well, like two weeks ago, maybe. Um, see, I'm supposed to be getting my period, like, um, in like the teens, you know, of the month, you know. And two weeks ago, I was like having sex with my boyfriend, and um, like right afterwards, um, I started, you know, like menstruating. That's normal for sex yeah. to trigger bleeding. Um, but it was really weird because it just like to it like went on overnight. Yep. And then it totally stopped, like, yep. the next day. That can happen. And, um... Are you menstruating normally otherwise? Um, yeah. No big deal. And, no. um... But, see, it, it, like, kept on doing that. And then I decided to give it a rest for a couple of days, and everything was, like, clear. Nothing, no, nothing. And then, um, two days ago, um, well, we had sex again. And, um, it happened again. All right. So... Again, could be normal. Uh, worthwhile getting your thyroid checked, having a pap smear, make sure there's nothing, no infection, any other structural problems, ovarian cyst, endometriosis, those sorts of things potentially causing this. Uh, medication, another cause of this, and just normal. So get checked out. Ann and Sherry and uh, security guard Clayton and uh, engineer Brett for uh, filling uh, filling engineer Mike's big shoes. And uh, what'd you get? What'd you get from tonight, Brett? Do you have that? Is hey, that right? I'm doing drugs. I'm a prostitute. I'm a stripper. I've had five billion relationships. I don't know whether I'm gay or, or straight. <laughs> that is so good. That is so golden. Golden. Do you hear me? All right. This is Adam Corolla for uh, Dr. Drew saying, Mommy. Mommy. This is the Love Line. The views expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. And are probably not the views of Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Engel. Now, please listen to this station longer. The, 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 the new rock. Transit 92.1.